Hello there, folks, and welcome to the BRO channel. I am your host, Wade Rush. Today, we're going to be talking about some field-tested, tried-and-true, one of my favorite big-game buckshot hunting rounds, which is an 18-pellet, 30-caliber, number one, and several different wads and configurations, and they all work great, and I'm going to show them all to you. Stand by. In the 18 pellet number one load, as well as in several others, the several others I'm referring to would be the 16 pellet 31 caliber and the 14 pellet 32 cal that we load in this same configuration in these three inch rounds. One of the primary components is the TPS wad, not only the three inch. What I'm going to show you here, remember the old white lightning wad? Yeah, I got thousands of them. Grant when the ter the contract was terminated they made up a uh, they made up a bunch of these uh for a client they uh they left them holding the bag so they what are you going to do you're going to sell them that's what you're going to do and whenever they had sold out of them see this right here exact same mold this is the the uh, ballistic products nine white lightning three inch wide right here the identical same thing, same polymer, just a different color, just gray instead of white, okay? Y'all still got the white lightning wads, they work great, I love them, man. Uh, the same as the regular gray TPS wads, I love them, man, they're the same dang thing. For today's purposes, folks, I've got the clear primed Fiocchi hulls here from Ballistic Products, they're primed with the standard 616, yes, the standard primed Standard primed, not the hot prime. Standard prime shitite works equally well for me. Okay, folks. Um, different components. Let's start with the wads. All of the wads that I have used successfully, we have used. We've been field testing this round since 2014. Yeah, we started this in 2014. It started out with the old multi-metal. Uh, wads from ballistic products that are in the TPS design. That's, that is what the multi-metal was replaced with the TPS series of wide. They're the same thing. Okay. Uh, just, I think, made out of a little bit better material. All right. Field tested. Actually successfully taken big game animals, hogs and deer and bear, according to Roger Atkins. Uh, okay. The wads. That's what I was talking about. It started out with the TPS or the multi-metal, which is the TPS series of wide. This is the Ballistic Products non-white lightning, three inch. Um, I think these were, these were not slit. These were, uh, I slit these with Mr. Gary Kasky's um, tools right here. You can get him through Facebook. He, uh, he puts together some outstanding wide slitting, hole trimming. He just, he can do it all. He puts together some outstanding kits. Get a hold of him there through Facebook. Just tell him what you want. And he can probably make it if it's not something he has uh, already in stock. But this was one of the first ones that we started working and developing these loads that were outstanding performers is in the TPS wad, as well as the, um, the precision wads, the TUPRW123 red, as well as the TUPRW12, which is the white wad from precision. Just made for the, the white wad is two and three quarter inch. And we use a two and three quarter inch wide in a couple of these loads, and I'll explain why here in a minute. As well as wides like the Gualandi wides, the MG42, the uh, the little green wide, the super short. Yes, I may not demonstrate every wide in uh, in all of this that we put together, but I'm also going to go down to the range and show you how these things perform here at a later date. Whenever it's not raining, I'm expecting Noah to come by at any minute here in the south. We've got a stationary front down below us and is a low is just spinning here over us here in the south and it's just con been continuously raining here for several days and they're expecting this to continue all the way through to sunday this is tuesday they're expecting this to continue all week long we're about to float off 
Okay. So anyway, there's just so many possibilities that you can do. And we use a couple of different powders that really work good for us. And that is long shot and blue dot are the two primaries we have. I have used the uh, pro reach, but it's all about what is available, what you can get. Uh, a lot of folks have been able to get some, get their hands on some blue dot here lately. And, uh, and most folks can still find long shot. So let's put a couple together. And like I said, there's so many different wise configurations. We'll go over that in more depth whenever we get down to the range. Okay. Thank folks. I had to get me a different hat. My black hat there is great for cold weather or cool weather, you know, cold weather when it drops down in the, you know, seventies around here, cold weather, you know, here in the South. But, uh, Guys, I'll talk a lot because I'm, I'm going into a lot of detail in this stuff to try to help you out as much. I hope it ain't don't go, doesn't get too boring and all that stuff. But a lot of y'all want more detail. I'm going to give you as much as I can. Okay, to uh, another point we're making. We've uh, here over the years, 28 and a half grains a long shot in the three inch um, hunting rounds here with all of them with 14 pellet, 16. 1432, 1631, and 1830 cal. All of them in the same setup. That's the number of pellets and uh, pellet sizes that fits in this round. The, we were using like 28 and a half of long shot. That seemed to be the sweet spot. But we have also found out that 26 and 27 grains of long shot work just as well many, many times. Let me explain. Uh, I've had several rounds that Grant Fackler over at Ballistic Products has checked, has tested for us. We're talking pressure test, muzzle velocity, and all, all the in-depth stuff that they do. And the load with the 28 and a half of long shot was a tad hot. I'm talking, whenever I'm saying minuscule hot, uh, according to semi-type um, parameters, it was just a touch hot in the round. I'm gonna leave it at that, okay? So, uh, dangerous? No, not by a long shot. <laughs> not by a long shot, how about that? That was not an intended pun. But anyway, see what I'm saying. So we uh, tried a lot. I'd already been using 26 grains. That's where I started, was at 26. And that was where we were, well, I mean, we were wearing them out using 26 and 27 grains as well. A lot of folks like the hotter stuff. Nothing wrong with that. You can still shoot the hotter stuff if you want to. You just don't have to. Okay? All right. So anyway, here, I've got 26 grains here in the old Lee tabletop dispenser here. And the newer one's got 27 grains, both long shot. I've got blue dot here in the Hornady lock and load. And, uh, and yeah, there is a couple of rounds where we, where we use the blue dot. We'll do that here in a minute. All right, after all that explaining, I've got, uh, I've got 26 grains of long shot here in this three inch prime Fiocchi. Now you can use a napkin, you can use uh, whatever you want to go with. The, I've, I've got a thin 12 gauge overshot uh, card right here. I'm gonna put that over the powder. One of Gary's nudgers here. Thin 12 gauge overshot card. That will make sure that, that the small flake and that long shot powder doesn't migrate. Does it matter? I've shot a lot of rounds with migrated powder all in it. Didn't have any trouble with them. Okay, the three inch TPS. Make sure it's seated down real good on top of everything down in here. Now, we're going to want, I've got a quarter inch, I've got some quarter inch 20 gauge Alcan wads, paper wads, and I just cut them half in two. To make them an eighth inch. You want that in the bottom of the wad because we want, I keep reaching for the, 
You want the bottom of your wide flat. The uh, bottom of your TPS wads are dipped. Okay. Yes. Just press it in to make it flat. Now, we need 18. I got some real. There's a cow. Yeah, here we go. These are also out of Marty's molds. Oh, hey, hey. Okay, here we go. Six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Oh, sixteen, eighteen. Right to the top of the wad. These things are real springy here too. Oh, it's only, they're bouncing in there pretty good, so they will compress in there without dimpling up the hole. Number 47 buffer. Original works just as good. 47 is what I got sitting right here. Get my little massager. Or does that do a good job? Alrighty. We're going to standard. Do a regular old crimp on this. I hadn't been in here for a while. Just like a boss. Butamus round. Alrighty. Boy, that has been a killer right there. That's a good one. I wouldn't, I'd use a napkin if you went to 27 grains. I would use the napkin because the napkin will conform right into the bottom of the wide. That overshot card will, will bend a little bit, but not much. So you'll have to watch your shot column height. Alright, yeah, and that's beautiful crimp, but we can taper it a little bit. I got the um, the guy 12 gauge OTP right here. Puts a nice little finish and a taper on it. And since these go into virtually uh, um, auto loaders a lot and pumps, you want that little bit of taper and all that on it. All right, let's put the next one together. All right. Let's jump off into the deep end here now. Okay. We're going to use a little bit different wide. Now, this is a... Here's a uh, standard gray... Standard gray 3-inch TPS on the right, left... See, is almost an, a little better than an eighth of an inch, probably uh, shorter. That is the two and three quarter inch TPS wide. Both TPS wads, just one's cut for two and three quarter inch, one's cut for three inch. We're going to use the two and three quarter inch. Why? Gives us more room. Gives us a little bit of extra room for the shot to spread out a little bit more at the top, so it gives us more capacity inside the hole because we're going to use 27 of long shot in this one here. Twenty-seven a long shot, and I'm gonna grab a. Where's the? Oh, there we go. I moved them. Napkin, just one inch or inch and eighth square, but one inch square is perfect. Get it set on here. It is pouring rain outside. Two and three quarter inch EPS wad. This will go in and that napkin will conform into the bottom of this wad so you don't hardly lose any capacity whatsoever. See the difference in the height here at the top? We're going to roll crimp this one. 
once again, eighth inch, 20 gauge, wide, be it felt, paper, whatever it is, cut pizza boxes, five eighths inch, 20 gauge, three quarter inch for 12, five eighths inch for 20 gauge. Press that in the bottom of the wad, same reason, make it flat. what it should look like. Get that. Get that 20 gauge card looking where it's pretty level in there. Another handful. Get us 18 pellets. 30 cal number one. And I've got to drop one. All right, two, four, six, eight, ten, 12, 14, 16, 18. See how much more room we got here now? That's why we did it. We got a little bit more powder. 27 grains a long shot. Using number 47. I think um I had looked, Grant had said they had they got a new um they got a green can of a different type of buffer there at Ballistic Products. I, I gotta call Grant and get some ordered. Um, I haven't tried it yet. The guys that are using it, Tyler McDavid, he loves it. Well done, well done. Got a clear segmented overshot card, paper overshot card, bingo card, all of it works. But I'll tell you, this is something you guys may run into. If you haven't yet, you probably will. The the hunters, the fellows that have the extended magazine tubes on the shotguns where you can have that, we have, what has happened here is using the bingo cards. If you don't double the bingo card, if you have a single bingo card in there and you run these rounds in an extended tube where you may have five or six of these rounds under all that spring pressure, you can crack. That bingo card will split. It'll crack and dump buffer all into the magazine. Yeah, ask um, who was it? Uh, Robbie Joyner. Ask him how we know that. Okay, but we figured it out. We got it fixed. These thick segmented overshot cards are two bingo cards. The two bingo cards are the same about an eighth of an inch, just under maybe, three sixteenths uh, of an inch. Three, no, three, three thirty seconds. Three thirty seconds of an inch, probably about what it is. This 27 grain round with the two and three quarter inch wide is one of my favorites. Now, the same with the three inch TPS and the two and three quarter inch TPS. You can also use the Precision RW123 Red and the Precision TUPRW12, which is the, the white one, the 12 gauge. Same principle, same way. They work excellent as well. If that's, the, if that's what you can find, they work outstanding. I use them in a lot of my ball rounds. Great wide. All right, where was I? Oh, all right. I put, I put a little bit of uh, petroleum jelly in this thing about every four or five rounds. Absolutely beauty mioso. Outstanding round. Field tested, proven. Nine years now, eight eight into nine years now of field testing this round. So I'm going with the old school wise, like the TPS. That's the ones we started with. Uh, these other ones kind of came along at later dates, so we figured out they work really, really well. But uh, but the TPS is where we started. Man alive, is that a hammer jammer right there? Works great. Now and the same thing with the uh, with the two and three quarter inch size. We can use some blue dot. Stand by. All right. Well, fellas, if um, 
if you need a two and three quarter inch size, but all you got is a three inch. These are just a pair of snips. You can get these in ballistic products also. They're, I think they're less than 10 bucks. I want to cut about an eighth of an inch off. I'm not measuring. I'm just looking at and guessing. About an eighth of an inch right there. And once I cut this one, once I cut that one, now I've got a guide to where I can just lay it up here and get the other ones. That one, that one, and the last one. Just that quick. And it ain't got to be perfect. Just got to be functional. That's all. Alrighty. Now, we're going to set up. I don't have a camera here on the lock and load. I have shown this thing many times. And like I said, Hornady doesn't even make this machine anymore. I think they make an updated version. I haven't gotten it yet. Just hadn't put the money into it to get a newer one. This one still works great. RCBS makes a great one. Lyman makes a great one. Okay. We need 33 grains of blue dot. Once again, why the two and three quarter inch size weight? Because we need the extra room. Blue dot takes up more room in the hull than the long shot does. Alrighty, 33 grains of blue dot. Trying to be careful and do this carefully without the um, most times with the TPS wide, it's got a real nice beveled base on them. And you usually do not need um, with powders, the bigger flake powders. Now, mind you, blue dot is not a big flake powder, but it's a medium flake powder. Usually, this will grab your the powder and it works fine. You may have a piece or two that may be by it, but just a piece or two. We got, got a couple of little, one or two grains, uh, now I'm talking individual grains of powder that looks like it got by the TPS wad. That's not going to hurt a thing. Um, once again, eighth inch, 20 gauge, same principle, same thing, reiterating the same stuff. We're just using a different powder this time. I'm trying to make that that 20 gauge wide just as flat as I can. You want your shot column to be as symmetrical as possible. And stacking by twos makes a difference. Does um, does buckshot stacked by twos pattern better than stacked by threes and fours every time? That's going to have to do with surface area. The less surface area that those pellets contact whenever they leave the barrel, like just being stacked by twos, and uh, instead of stacked by threes where there's a lot more contact surface area on the pellets, uh, the more that, that you have to stack them into or the more you crowd them in there, it makes a difference in the patterns. It just, it has. It has for me anyway. I know it has for Roger as well. But uh, when the, the pellets, what I'm saying is the pellets stacked by twos in the shot column will usually pattern better than the pellets stacked by threes every time. For me anyway. All right. All right, well, I didn't drop any that time. Two, four. And that, trying to make sure the pellets didn't want to stack like they should. Making sure that paper is flat. You start out crooked and messed up, it don't get better as you get up higher. Two, four, six. Six, eight. Ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, and eighteen. Is 
to any of the three buffers from ballistic products. I don't use the um, precision buffer in these loads. It, um, if, if you're using 20 down to the lower ends, 25, 26 grains of long shot in this, you may be able to get away with it. I've shot a lot of them. But uh, the, um, the buffers from uh, BP are just lighter. They're a little bit lighter. At least in my experience, they are. Alrighty. Yep, we're gonna we're gonna conventionally crimp this as well. I think y'all can see the little Mark Five Six Hundred. Like a boss. Alrighty. And the uh, the Gwalandi wads also work outstanding with this with this load. Um, like I said, I've used the uh, the MG42 as well as the little super short, little green wad. It all depends on how how much spread that you want on your patterns. That's what it all boils down to. All right, hang on. And fellas, I'm gonna do one more. I'm gonna put one together here with the MG42. And there's no need in me sitting here and putting together each individual round with the different wads and all that in it. We're just leaving out the little super short. But you do the same thing. The super short is basically an MG42 that's just a quarter of an inch short. And so it works the same way. It just got more room at the top of the shot column. That's, that's the only difference. We'll talk more about that when we go down to the range for part two of this. Or the follow-up for this video anyway. Alright. We want to get also want to get 27 grains of long shot here. Now, you don't have to worry about powder migrating by the uh, these Wolandi wads. They got bigger, bigger cups here on the bottom for straight walled hulls. And they will seal up in here nicely. And they've also got big old nice power piston and all that in it as well yep and 18 pellets 30 30 count number one and like i said earlier folks this is uh this isn't the only configuration that this works with 16 pellets of 31 cal 14 pellets of 32 cal all same stuff same wides same data all of it equal all of these payload weights are 165 to 17 165 175 175 with the 30 cal number ones 165 to 175 they're real real close two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen and 18. We're going to roll crimp this one too. We got plenty of room and I like roll crimping. It's just really, really, it's neat. Number 47, because that's what I got sitting here on the bench. I know this video runs a little bit long, fellas, but I don't know any other way to do it. Don't want to leave anything out. Because it's all important. And there will be have to be a vanilla down version that I can post to YouTube, if I can even post some of it. The, uh, the vast majority of the ones that go into the great detail that I do here, I will have to put on my Patreon page. It's just, that's that's the way it is. It's the world we live in. All right. Thin paper, 12-gauge overshot card. These things seal up outstanding. They're like a gasket, quite literally. It doesn't allow the buffer to get by it. And when the plastic rolls in on the top of it, it seals. It seals pretty good with the segmented, but I've had to put some of the, um, the Miracle Nail 
even around the perimeter of the using the segmented over shot card, definitely with the bingo cards to make sure that the buffer doesn't leach by the uh, your your crimp, your roll crimp on your overshot cards. Don't have to worry about it with these paper cards. Like I said, they're just like a gasket. All of these, all of these have been taking big game in the field for years now. These are tried, tested, and true. The little green wide, same thing, same data. You got a little bit more room in here with this, uh, with the shot column, with the, with the super short, and consistently a little bit wider patterns than the MG42, than the and than the uh, TPS style or the TUPRW-123 or the TUPRW-12 from Precision. This is where it, the research started and these have been in the field with us for several years. This uh, 18 pellet number one, that's mostly what's in my belt for uh, whenever I'm on the dog rides. That's the one I shoot the most of. And I shoot them all three, 32 cal, 31 and 30. But my Stoger really likes these 30 cal number ones. You know, are there other wads, like the CSD-114, the LBC-50? Yeah, we, uh, we took deer with those this past fall in the field. But uh, the ones I'm talking about right now are the, uh, the ones that have been tried and true for years. These uh, new ones are showing a lot of promise. There'll be upcoming videos just as soon as we can get to them. That's going to wrap it. I know it ran a little bit long, but I didn't want to leave anything out, any details out that you guys may need. Love y'all. Wade Rush with the BRO channel. This has been a segment of the BRO Reloading Bench. We'll see you on the next one.